The Kimri electric glycol pump is an efficient emissions-free solution for gas dehydration systems. In this video, we're going to show you how to perform routine maintenance on the GEA electric glycol pump, including changing the oil, replacing the diaphragms, and installing a complete valve kit. As long as it is isolated from production, the electric glycol pump can be repaired on site and does not need to be separated from the motor. As long as you have enough space below the pump to collect the used oil, you may choose to leave it in place. We will not be repairing the motor in this video. The front of the pump is the fluid end. The large center portion is the hydraulic section and the back of the pump is the crankshaft end. We will only be working on the fluid end. If you need help with the hydraulic section or the motor, contact Kimray Field Services. These are the tools, chemicals, and kits you'll need to complete this repair. We recommend changing the oil after the first 500 hours of operation for new pumps and pumps that have had the hydraulic section repaired. For pumps in service, follow the guidelines and Kimray's documentation. Changing the oil is simple. Secure the pump. We are using a clamp on the table. Place an appropriate vessel under the drain plugs to catch the used oil. Use a quarter inch hex wrench to remove the two drain plugs. Then open the top cap to accelerate the flow. Once the oil has drained, replace the drain plugs and fully tighten. Replace the cap for now to keep contaminants out of the body while we finish the repair. If you are only performing an oil change, you can add 2.75 quarts of oil now. There are three repair kits. In this video, we're going to use the complete repair kit. It includes the contents of both the valve kit and the diaphragm kit. We'll start by removing the discharge and suction check valves. These are also called outlet and inlet check valves. If you are only replacing the diaphragms from the diaphragm kit, you can skip this step and begin with removing the manifold. Use a large adjustable wrench to remove the three discharge check valves. The valve outlet assemblies twist off and separate from the plug. Discard the assembly, but keep the plug. Remove and discard the O-ring from the outlet plugs. Next, remove the three suction check valves. The valve inlet assemblies twist off and separate from the plug. Discard the assembly, but keep the plug. Remove and discard the O-ring from the inlet plugs. Next, we'll use a 5 8 wrench to remove the 8 bolts around the manifold. Then, remove the manifold. Inspect the manifold for signs of excessive wear. Place a straight edge across the surface to check for warping. A worn or warped manifold should be replaced. Blow air or brake cleaner through the inlet and outlet holes to clear any debris or buildup. Next, we'll remove the diaphragms. First, use a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen the screws. You'll need to stabilize the shaft behind the diaphragms before you'll be able to fully remove the screw. To do this, lift an edge of the diaphragm to expose the hole in the shaft behind the diaphragm. You may need to manually turn the pump shaft to move the diaphragm out further to reach the hole. Insert a 1 8 hex wrench through the cross hole to keep the rod from spinning. Unthread the screw fully to remove the diaphragm.
Repeat this for all three diaphragms. Keep the diaphragm clamps and bolts, but discard the diaphragm. Place the diaphragm clamp on the new diaphragms. Apply blue medium Loctite to the screw threads and start by hand. Use a 1 8 inch hex wrench to hold the shaft in place and tighten with a 10 millimeter socket to 60 inch pounds. Make sure the diaphragm is seated in the machined groove. Insert the bolts and washers into the manifold and tighten by hand. Torque bolts to 50 foot-pounds. Start with the four center bolts and move outward in a crisscross pattern. Place a backup ring over the outlet seat. Install the O-ring. Then the second backup ring. Make sure the cut portion of both backup rings are flush together. Place the outlet plug onto a slip-resistant surface and stack the spring on top. The valve disc should be beveled side up. Align the tabs between the outlet plug and the seat. Lock the pieces together by pushing them down firmly and then rotating the plug and the seat. Verify that the cut portion of both backup rings are still flush together and apply grease. Install the final O-ring on the plug. Apply anti-seize to the threads of the plug. Insert the assembly into the top of the manifold. Tighten until solid contact occurs. Repeat these steps with the remaining discharge check valves. Next, we'll assemble and replace the suction check valves. Place the retainer ring onto the seat. Add the valve disc, beveled side down, followed by the spring. Snap the spring retainer onto the seat under the groove. Next, slide an O-ring over the seat. Place a backup ring around the inlet seat. Next, install the O-ring on the inlet plug. Add grease to the O-rings. Attach the valve suction assembly to the inlet plug by twisting them together. Apply anti-seize to the threads of the plug. Insert the assembly into the front of the manifold. Tighten until solid contact occurs. Repeat these steps with the remaining suction check valves. Lastly, remove the oil cap and add 2.75 quarts of oil. Be sure the oil cap is clean before replacing it.
Before restarting the pump, be sure to follow all initial startup instructions listed in the technical documents. For questions on this process or anything else about the Kimray Electric Glycol Pump, contact product support.